hello and welcome back to the channel uh, today we are going to do an analysis on the stress concentration factor so as you all know uh, stress concentrations occur due to different uh, changes in the geometry for example like transitions in the diameter fillets holes uh, and other other restrictions or transitions in the geometry so in this case we are going to analyze a, a shaft which I, which is stepped which means which has two diameters like this and which is uh, filleted in the in the transition so this is the basic theory where stress concentration lines uh, will will the flow will change due to the restrictions so so this is a, a geometry that we are going to analyze we have a shaft with, which is stepped. The larger diameter is capital D, smaller is uh, simple D, and we have, we have a fillet of radius R. And this is under tension. So we have a force of it pulling the geometry to the sides. So from theory, uh, we have charts like this, which we can easily use to find this stress concentration factor. So in a case like this, what we have to do is we can use the diameter values and then divide them to uh, obtain the ratios and then uh, radius of the fillet divided by the small diameter we can use the values uh, in the x-axis and then using those two values we can find the stress concentration factor so we are going to use ANSYS to uh, reproduce this chart we're going to do a parametric analysis and uh, plot this chart and uh, see how it goes so initially we have, will start uh, using a geometry. Just forget these parameters and all for now. We'll uh, start by just creating a geometry from here. You can just use this here. And then what I've done is I have uh, created a geometry in design model. Let me open it. So I've used design modeler to create the geometry. Here I have the uh, shaft with the bigger diameter and small diameter and here the filleted area. So what you have to do is create a sketch initially. Let me suppress. So let me suppress the either solid body and In a plane of your choice, you can uh, you can create the you can draw two circles to represent the two shafts, <clears throat> and then what you can do is uh, you can extrude these uh, two like this with the required lens. both of them in the in the respective directions to a length of your choice like the length is not a problem in this analysis so i've used 25 millimeters here and then you can create the solid body uh, then you can uh, go to blend here and uh, use the fix, fix, uh, fixed radius blend like this uh, to create the filleted area. So this is this is what you get. So since this is a parametric analysis, we need to change the diameters and the fillet radius to see uh, what this, uh, what the results will be according to the diameters. So for that, you can go to sketch. And from the two diameters here that you 
used for the two circles, you can see like uh, you can make them as parameters by clicking this stick here, right here. So what does what that does is it makes this a input parameter for the analysis so that you can change the value uh, to whatever you want uh, in the parametric analysis toolbox. So in this case, since I've already done that, uh, uh, there's no change when I click here, but uh, when when initially you click here, you'll get a uh, message window asking for a variable name. So uh, I've used the variable uh, capital D and simple D in that analysis. So you when you when you click it, click this box, you'll get a message window asking for a variable name. So once you have done that, you can uh, set the fillet radius also as a parameter by clicking here. Again, you'll get a message window asking for a variable name. You can use simple R or whatever the variable. And then uh, when you close the design model, you'll get something like this parameter set, not this part, only this part. Then what you can do is right click on geometry, transfer data to new, uh, Or rather, you can uh, just go to static structural from here and drag and drop it into the geometry. Uh, I'm not going to do that since I've already uh, taken a static structural one. Then you'll get these uh, arrows, and then you can go to model. Here, once you have the model, uh, we have already set up the geometry, so you have the solid body. Uh, there are no connections. Uh, you can just update the mesh. Since we are ne we, we need to analyze the stresses in the uh, filleted section, which is where the stress concentrations occur, we have used a refinement for that area. You can add it here. And then, uh, I've added the fixed support here. Like it's it's similar to a bar intention, uh, whether you pull it from both sides or whether you fix it from one side and pull it from the other side. Uh, so I've used a fixed support on this surface and then applied the force here. In this analysis, like uh, the force is, force can be kept constant. Like we need to only analyze the stress concentrations, but if you need to vary the force also as a parameter, you can click here, but in this case, it's not needed. So that's it. In the solution, uh, you can add a normal stress of the surface and no normal stress of the pilloted area so that we could uh, identify the maximum stress in both areas. Uh, Maximum normal stress in this, this would be the normal tensile stress that that's uh, the force divided by the area. So if we apply a force of 100 newtons, we can divide that by the cross section area of this smaller diameter shaft that would give the maximum normal stress, which is 1.27 uh, MPa in this case. And from this, we can find the stress in this area. So once you have done with the setup, you can just simulate it once and you'll get the results. And then you can uh, close mechanical. And since you have, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot something. So since this is a parametric uh, study, we need to, uh, get the results stress values as also as a uh, uh, output parameter. So normal stress, I've selected this space and I've uh, exported it 
as a parameter using by clicking here the, the p value if you need the minimum value also you can click minimum as well but it's not needed uh, similarly for the filtered area i have uh, taken the maximum value here you can rename these uh, results uh, thing to whatever you want and that will appear in the parametric study and then you can close mechanical and this is what you this is how you'll see the workflow then you can double click on parameter set for now forget everything i if you uh, see the left hand of the uh, window you can see the input parameters that we initially selected simple d means the small diameter of the chart the, the larger diameter r is the fillet radius so these are the initial initial values that we have set and output parameters we can see uh, the two stress values that we selected to be exported uh, or, or uh, shown in the results and then moving to the right hand of the window here you can set any number of design points that you need like if I've already created 17. Now, uh, here you can see the input parameters. Here you can see the output parameters. So this P1 is D, P2 is capital D, P6 is capital R. So if you need to do a test with uh, P1 being uh, 15, the larger diameter being 20, uh, 25, and the fillet radius being seven, you, you have to add at the uh, design uh, variables like this. So you can add any amount of design variables like this. Uh, so these are the des uh, design points that I've, uh, I've selected. So I've simulated initially with uh, the small diameter being 10 and varying the uh, large diameter for within 11, 15, and 20. And I've kept the fillet radius constant at five. This is because uh, I'm trying to reproduce this graph. Yeah, we have D, capital D of simple D being uh, two, 1.5 and 1.1. So I've, I've made sure that capital D of simple D is uh, two here. 1.5 here and 1.1 here. And then once you have uh, set the design points, you can uh, click update all design points here and the simulation will run automatically. And you will get the stress values here. You can see the normal stress, it's constant because the force applied and the minimum diameter is kept constant because simple D is constant. And he here you can see the maximum and uh, normal stress in the filleted area. So once you have once you have these values, uh, uh, you can uh, you can tabulate them, as you can see here. Uh, you can calculate the area. You know the force. The area is constant since uh, D is constant. So you can calculate the nominal stress. This is one point two seven from the equation. It's it's the same as the uh, normal stress from the simulation. So that's pretty obvious. And then here you have the maximum stress. So this formula can be used to find the stress concentration factor, maximum stress in the filleted area divided by the normal stress. Normal stress is constant. You divide the maximum stress by that and you get the uh, stress concentration factor. And if you plot this, you will get a graph like this. So this is uh, pretty similar to uh, the graph that is available in textbooks. So that's basically how you do a parametric analysis. In this case, for a uh, for the reproduction of the chart for stress concentration factors uh, of a shaft under tension. So yeah, thank you.